Heidi ho, it's Andrew, and today I would like to teach you how to find the zeros and give the multiplicity of each zero of the following function 2x raised to the fourth power multiplied now by x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4x. So the first thing is let's find the zeros and the multiplicity will follow. Okay, so what I have to make sure is I have this in fully factored form. I realize though that I don't really have this in fully factored form yet. Um, I realize that in this particular term I can pull out a common x, right? So let's pull out that common x. So this is gonna be two x to the fourth. I'm gonna put this in like a big bracket. I'm gonna pull out that common x now from here and I'm gonna divide each of these basically by x to find the corresponding uh, values that I should plug into my parenthesis here. Right, so it's just gonna be x cubed uh, divided by x which would be equal to then x squared. Then this is divided by x, so that's just reduce that by you know one x value basically. So that's four x to the first. You don't have to write the first, and then just plus four. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Now mathematically here, you got two x raised to the fourth multiplied by x. You can combine those values, right? So you got this is going to be two x to the fifth now, and multiplied then by this x squared minus four x plus four. All right. So I got one factor here, but this, uh, it's not fully factored, right? But you might say, oh, it's a quadratic. I know how to do that. I got to think of two values that multiply to positive four, but that yet add to negative four. And you might say, oh, right. Is that just going to be a negative two? And I would say yes, right? Negative two times negative two is a positive four. Negative two minus a positive two, basically, or I shouldn't really say that. I should say negative two plus a negative two, all right, is equal to a negative four. Even though they're both equivalent, I think it makes more sense the second way I said it. Um, all right, so now here we go. We have this. I realize, though, that I have two of these factors that are the same, and therefore, to highlight the multiplicity, I'm going to combine these, okay? I'm going to combine them, and when you combine them, right, it's just simply going to look like this, x minus two, x minus two, squared. All right. Make that two a little neater. Now, basically from here, I have two factors. All right. And I'm going to set them or I have two zeros essentially. All right. I'm going to set them equal now to zero on both sides because that's how we find the zeros. Again, if it's, if that, if you're like, well, why do you do that? I got 20 or so videos dedicated. Check out this playlist on our channel, graphs of polynomial functions. All right. It should be in like uh, pre-calculus chapter three, maybe section number four. Um, and I go through a ton of examples. Uh, it might not say find the zeros, but it might say find the x-intercepts, okay? But it's the same thing. So now what I'm going to do is take each of these. So I got 2x raised to the fifth. That should equal zero. What happened to that? And then I got now uh, x minus 2 being equal, squared basically being equal to zero. So the first thing is here is we would have to find the fifth root, okay, of both sides. But I you know, you don't really have to get too crazy on this because zero to the one fifth power is just going to be zero. Essentially, these powers, when you, these powers won't do anything because your first step is to get rid of them. And whenever you take the fifth root or the second root or whatever you want to do, square root, cube root, whatever, it's always going to work out to be zero. Now, if you've been following me on all this practice, you should see that pattern continuously. And that's the benefit of doing practice. So this is just going to be 2x is equal to zero. You divide both sides by two, but quite honestly, who cares? Because zero divided by two is still going to be zero. So that's going to be a x-intercept there. You're going to have an x-intercept at zero, or in other words, you're going to have a zero at zero. Right, if that's not confusing, I don't know what is. But square root both sides now for the second term, and when you do that, it's going to be x minus two is equal to zero. Again, as, you, as I mentioned before, it doesn't really make a difference. You don't have to include this, okay, when you find those zeros. And then to solve for x here, you just add 2 to the right-hand side, right? So x will be equal to positive 2. And guess what? That is another value of x when the function crosses that x-axis, which is known as the x-intercept, which is also known as a 0. Now, to find the multiplicity of each 0, all you got to do is when you have it in this form, just look at the exponents. So when you found the uh, 0 value of the function, x will be 0, okay? the power of that factor was five. And therefore that's also equal to its multiplicity. So that's why I put it in that form, okay? And also when you have, remember when we saw for the other zero of the function where X is gonna be equal to two, the power of that was a two. So that's gonna be the multiplicity there, okay? 
And that's how you would answer the fact, the zeros and the multiplicities. Now, if you're like, okay, I kind of understand the process, but I'm a visual person. All you got to do is graph it. So go to 2x raised to the fourth power. All right. And then minus, uh, oop, parenthesis. And then it's going to be x cubed. So x raised to the three. Then it's going to be minus 4x squared. Where's my square? There it is. And then it's going to be plus 4x. Got a little cross out there for a second. Okay. Now all you have to do is graph this. So I'm going to go to zoom standard. All right. Let's see where it's looking. All right, cool. I could probably zoom in a little bit. So let's zoom. Go to zoom two. Yeah. And there you go. So now right from here, what we're going to start to see is we're going to start to notice the zeros. Okay. Remember the zeros are the locations where it's going to either intersect or touch that x-axis. Okay. So remember the x-axis is the horizontal axis. So we notice here that right at this location, it looks like x is equal to zero. You see how the function crossed the x-axis there? It actually crosses it, right? It starts low and then it goes up. Whenever you have odd multiplicities, you should get a crossing like that. And notice the zero value had an odd, that zero value had an odd multiplicity. Now, whenever you get a bounce, you get like a touch and go, so to speak. You should expect an even multiplicity. And look, the value here, right, the zero value was x, uh, the zero of the function was where x is equal to two. And look, the multiplicity was even. Now you might say, okay, that's cool, but why is that, Andrew? Well, guess what? I got a whole video dedicated to that, all right? Check out the link in the description below. If you really want to understand why certain values, odd and even, give you know, rise to certain function behavior, which I highly suggest you do because it's honestly quite simple. It's really easy, and it makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, like I said, check that video out, okay? And uh, yeah, but that's the end of this. I really do hope this helps. I really appreciate all of your support, really. I mean, so very much. If you haven't done so already, if you can like and subscribe, that would be all. It helps us out tremendously. It helps us produce more videos. I mean, we've got thousands of videos out there. Imagine how much more we could produce. And we not only have videos in math, but we have it in physics and chemistry as well. We've got a whole lot of other stuff coming. So if you really like our approach, our very, well, we try to take detailed approach. I mean, you might notice some of the videos are like, oh my God, he spent 40 minutes on one problem. Uh, yeah, I did. Because it takes that amount of time to actually explain something okay if you really want to understand how it works if you just want to we we try to show you how it works why it works we want to teach you how to think not what to think all right so if that sounds good to you check out our channel because i think you're going to love it we will see you soon take care